up the questions for Jen and Carter. Anybody? Okay. Ten days away for spring training until 32 non-roster invitees. Carter, we talked about it yesterday, but when you just look at the fact that these guys are going out here and competing every single day, every step of the way, how encouraging is that for you, Jim? Yeah, you know, I think um, <clears throat> the longer you do this job, the more you realize that um, for all those players, it's a job at audition. You know, they're here for an interview. Uh, guys come in ready to go now. Um, we have all the meetings with the non-roster players and the roster players over the next couple of days. And, you know, they're here to, to win jobs, and they're here to set themselves up for a really good summer. And uh, I think it's our job to put them in the right position to do that and to understand that it is, in their estimation, in their mindset, it's a it's a job interview every day. I'd say from a from an expectation standpoint, I mean, I think really our focus is just trying to get better every day and then trying to make sure that you know, we put ourselves in position to win as many games as possible. And you know, that's no different from last year. You know, obviously feel really encouraged by the guys that we brought in. Um, feel like we've taken some step forwards with a major league team with you know different players, and feel like we got a really good mix of, of players in the clubhouse here. And the vibe here has been outstanding here for the last couple of weeks. People have been out early, so we're definitely excited. There's a there's an edge here that uh, you know I think is a little bit more than we had last year, which is super exciting for all of us. There are a lot of guys here, and today is the first day for pitchers and catchers. It seems like the whole roster is pretty present and accounted for. What does that say about what they feel heading into this season? Yeah, it's, it was great um, talking to the guys yesterday. The clubhouse guys are saying, you know, maybe all but you know, eight or ten guys are already here, which is incredible. And um, guys are in great shape. Uh, you know, spring training has really changed. I think over the the years, it's no longer a a time to get ready. It's a it's a time to it's go time already. Guys guys are here ready to go. And I do think it it kind of goes to the expectations of the excitement that guys want to be here. Uh, people are excited to get going. Um, I'd be curious actually even to know around the league. Uh, if it's that way as well, just because it's finally a normal spring as well. So people are excited just to have some normalcy and uh, and get going and not have protocols or, or you know, um, uh, not knowing exactly when things are going to start. So I think that's, that's probably part of it as well. Jay, kind of on that front, when you look back at that, like, crazy mad dash last year, is, is there anything that you guys learned or, like, implemented into your processes in a more normal off season? I don't think so, honestly. It was such a it was such a strange thing. Uh, we were actually talking about it yesterday. Um, you know, all of February and a little bit of March last year was kind of planning, and then we we had a, a whatever a week to ten days of, of execution. And um, I don't think anything was representative of a normal market, right? Because it was it, everything was was so confined and into this, this small space and. When we talked about that this winter, as we we're talking about like the reliever market, for example, we're talking about the you know different deals we got last year. You kind of realize like, oh wait, that was irrelevant. Last year was this crazy um, mad dash where guys needed to get in camp to get ready to be able to be ready for the season. So I don't think we learned much at all. Uh, it was <laughs> it was something. It was an experience. Um, we didn't sleep much. No, it was kind of like having a another trade deadline or something like that. But um, it's something we'll remember, but you don't take much information from it. Just with all the rule changes this year, it, is there any sense that you feel like spring training is much more valuable, getting used to what the new style of play and, and changes are going to be on the field from the regular season? It adds an element, for sure. I think there'll be, um, have been already a lot of conversations about it. But um, you know, I think for the coaching staff, thinking about you know base running things for the, the pitching guys, thinking about the timer and how that impacts things will be interesting. Um, obviously, they're going to start the rules um, right away, you know, so I think that'll be that'll be nice to, to, to have, you know, some data. And, and I'm sure there'll be some some struggles. There'll be some pitchers that struggle with the clock. There'll be um, some strange things that happen on the bases, but hopefully we can get that stuff out of the way and kind of test our boundaries base running wise here and then, you know, get going in this, during the season. Did baseball need it? Did baseball need these changes? I'm in favor of all these things. I think that the more we can put action in, into the game, the more people are running. The you know the, the quicker pace it is, the, the better. Um, you know, no one no one wants to go to a three hour and forty five minute game and have that be a common occurrence. And I think that uh, we were actually saying yesterday we're gonna have some there'll be some quick games this year. I, mean, I think if you have a pitchers duel and guys are you know it's like you know everyone becomes Wade Miley. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so what what um, what will look like day to day prep for the new changes during? 
Yeah. Probably, probably a better question for Rossi and, and for Andy. I mean, they're certainly talking about it, but I know they'll put a lot of this stuff into the drill work. I know they're, they're working on these things in the bullpen, so it's a good question for Tommy exactly how he plans to, to implement it. But, um, yeah, there are some pitchers that had routines they have to break, and um, we've been talking to them all winter, so hopefully they've been incorporating that into their, their, their workouts. But, um, yeah, it's hard to change routines when, when guys have been doing things for a long time, and they're going to have to you know, use this spring to, to do that. Let you go out there and pick it. And there's a potential of six gold lovers in the lineup on starting on opening day. Uh, how encouraging is that to know that these guys are going to go out there and they're going to do their best defensive effort every step of the way? Yeah, I mean, just watching those guys take ground balls and then seeing these guys out and taking fly balls in the outfield yesterday, it was it was pretty encouraging. Just seeing, you know, to your point, just the the experience level and the talent level out there. Um, so I, I know our pitchers are really excited, uh, for sure. We're really excited. That played into some of the conversation that Jed and I were talking about on, on the potential for quick games. You know, just if we can take care of the baseball and do our business, we'll be in a really good spot to win some of those. So pretty exciting. And uh, yeah, I know our pitching staff could, over the moon. Carter, when you look at the makeup of this team and how it's been built back up, what similarities do you see your time in Cleveland and how you guys had sustained success there? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the pitching and defense thing is definitely something that's been talked about. Um, you know, I don't know that that was, you know, a definitive philosophy for us this offseason, nor was it a definitive philosophy in Cleveland as much as, you know, that was where the, the best opportunities to acquire players and to, to build out teams we feel like can win. Um, and so I think there is, is a similarity um, just by coincidence to some extent. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the idea of, of, you know, what we just talked about, having defense up the middle, having guys that can throw strikes, having guys that can also miss bats, that uh, puts you in a, a really good position to win. And, you know, we're going to score some runs as well, and we're excited about that. But we don't have to score as many. That's always helpful. What's the latest on some of the injured guys like Kyle Hendricks or Cody Hoyer and, and where, they, where they're going to start the season um, here? Um, well, Cody, um, and we expect he's going to be obviously delayed into the season. Um, you know, obviously, we're going to talk through the 60-day DL with him. That's a, a, a possibility, um, you know, given the, the rehab. Um, and even within the whole year, I think we're going to be talking about his workload and talking about back-to-backs and things like that. Um, with Kyle, um, he's feeling really good. Um, hopefully, he'll you know, get off a mound here really soon. You know, we know he's going to be delayed. Uh, we'll have a lot of discussions about how much, but uh, certainly we're – you know, prepared to start the season without him, and we'll see when he comes back. But the most important thing is getting him back to, you know, pitching like Kyle Hendricks, and we're willing to, you know, wait wait a little while for that. Jed, during the offseason, you said multiple times that you prefer not to talk extensions during spring training. Does that mean that you know, spring training starts today? Is it a hard line thing, no extensions? No, definitely not a hard line thing. You know, we have had discussions, and I'll stick with what we always do, which is not talk about where we are with them. But um, we've had good dialogue with 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 both sides. Um, we're not going to cut it off because we're we're here today. Um, you know, my, like like I said, my my preference is really not to get into the the end towards the end of spring training and get to a place where um, I feel like it's affecting the preparation and mentality. I would say for the the season, and I, I do think that has happened. I've seen that happen before, so. That's something we'll be aware of, and we've you know talked to both you know camps about that. But um, the, like I said, the conversations are good. We're not going to set some kind of firm deadline. So there's been positive momentum. Um, yeah, there's po- definitely positive conversations for sure. Yeah. Did you guys look at the Dakotas at, at all and just laugh at them? Did Dakota projections, those things. I mean, listen. Projections are you know they're they have um, their methodologies. I think we've. Um, We've answered these questions before. Uh, you know, I think there's, you know, there's definitely years, um, you know, that uh, the projections haven't haven't liked us or haven't liked us as much as we might. But, you know, ultimately our our job is to prove those wrong. You know, every single year there's going to be, um, you know, plus or minus ten wins on all the projection systems, and that has to be our goal: is to be a team that's that's you know plus ten or more, and that's what everyone's you know doing here, you know, working hard to do. So um, that's the that's the job. But ultimately, like you know. Who am I to question someone's methodology? You know, we have our internal projections. There's going to be, you know, ten plus projection systems we'll look at. Um, some might like us, some might not, but it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Ultimately, it's about you know, can we, you know, beat those projections and then compete for a playoff, you know, spot all summer. One of those things <clears throat> in the projections is it seems like you guys like your starting pitching more than external projection systems. Is there something about your pitching that you think can outperform those projections? Yeah, <clears throat> I think that's a slippery slope, talking about how you're going to outperform those. But um, I think we're going to throw a lot of strikes, uh, for sure. I think our staff has really good command. 
Um, <clears throat> I think we're going to really catch the ball, and, and that's certainly the hope is that um, you know um, you know our run prevention in general uh, exceeds expectations. You know, um, but. Like I said before, like I, I'm never going to sit here and tell, say why we're going to outperform a certain projection system. Just that I do think that we should have you know pretty good run prevention this year with the the, the improved defense, and I do think we're going to throw a lot of strikes. And you know we don't have a a strikeout pitching staff, but certainly we should limit our walks, and hopefully we um, the balls in play we can convert to outs. What do you, what's your view? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, we, <clears throat> we can't talk about all the additions right now, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll continue. Th- th- it's always going to be in flux. I think the bullpen, that's the nature of bullpens. Um, um, my hope, um, and Carter kind of alluded to this a little bit, is, you know, over this year and next year, we can, you know, continue to add more young options out of our farm system to the bullpen. I think, you know, that's the um, that's the dream, is to be able to have a bullpen that's almost entirely, you know, fueled by your, your farm system. We're not there yet, but we're, we're moving in the right direction with the power arms. Um, but it'll always be a work in progress, and um, I have a lot of confidence in Tommy and Chris Young and Daniel Moscos and those guys to, you know, continue to, to do a great job with, with the bullpen. Um, strategically, we've, uh, we've chosen to, to sort of limit you know, uh, long-term deals there, and, and over the last you know, three or four years, we've had some success, and uh, I do credit those guys for a lot of that success. What do you think the most valuable part of spring training this time of year is for the younger guys and the guys that eventually you hope you know make a big impact on the major league level? I mean, I think there's you, know, you can look at different buckets of, of spring training players. You know, there's the guys that are just preparing for the season. I wouldn't say just preparing, but know they have a roster spot, and so they're focused on how can I optimize myself for you know day one of the actual season. Then you got the guys that are kind of on the bubble that are really fighting for spots that you know are coming in our non-roster invites or guys that you know are not clear that they're going to be on the major league team, and they're really kind of what Jed talked about. You know, that that audition piece. Then you have a group that's you know really more focused on the exposure. The exposure to veteran players that have been here a long, long time. The exposure to you know a longer spring training than they've ever had, and just starting to build out the routines that they're going to need to become one of those guys that's in that preparation group, that's in that solidified group. So, you know, I think for the guys, you know, like a Pete Crow Armstrong or a Matt Mervis or some of these guys that are in their first major league camp, just the opportunity to experience that full six weeks the opportunity to be around guys with major league service that have won World Series and just really glean as much as they possibly can is the best part. It's fun for us to see them, but from an evaluation standpoint, it means zero to us. You know, we're more focused on what's the routine, what did you learn from this, how can you take it into your career? With, uh, with Saya now having eyes on him in camp, how, how do you think his offseason <coughs> work and how he ended the year sets him up for this season? Um, well, first of all, he looks great. I mean, he worked really hard all winter you know we were in communication with um with those guys all winter we knew he was working hard but it's fun to to see him in person and, and realize that you know he wasn't kidding about uh, coming in you know stronger and um <clears throat> you know he talked so much about what he learned from from last year you know he talked about you with you guys about the you know about hitting fastballs he talked about wearing down during the season and coming in stronger and that's the transition we were talking about last year you know and i thought last year um you know, it's sort of a you know we talk about a three part season. You know, he started off hot, slumped, and got hurt, and then and finished <clears throat> really strong. And I feel like, you know, he, I think he learned from each part of that. I think he learned that I can really compete at this level. Um, that um, you know, it, I can translate my Japanese f- performance here really well. But here are the things I need to do to do that. And you know, it's as um, some of it's as simple as diet. Um, but also, you know, you know, working hard during the season, you know, you know, working on hitting different pitches. And I, I think so much. He learned so much from last year. He took it into his work this winter, and hopefully, let's keep on improving and 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 keep on, you know, assimilating better and better. But um, I learned so much sort of talking to those guys over the course of the summer and hearing the things that were affecting him. And uh, I think going forward, if we have similar players, we can do an even better job of of helping with those things. Yeah, I mean it's tremendous. I and mean, I think you know we when I look at our lineup, I, I think you know we have we have a lot of guys I think are going to get really quality at bats. Um, certainly, we talked so much last year about power. You know, I think we added we added some power this winter, um, but it's not our strength as an, from an offense. And I think having him, 
you know, continue to, to you know, improve, continue to, to do what he did in April, I guess. Um, having that kind of middle of the order presence would go a long way for our offense. You mentioned quality of bats. I assume when you sold Mancini on coming here with Hosmer already here, yeah. it was about you'll get your bats. Is it just first base and DH for both those guys? Or you maybe mentioned a little outfield, but is that essentially what they'll do? Yeah, Trey will get some work in the corner outfield spots, but you know the majority of his at bats will be at first and, and DHing, and you know, expect him to be in the lineup almost every day. And uh, he does provide that that power we were talking about that we just have lacked a little bit. And um, I think he can. I think you know Wrigley's really <clears throat> well suited for him. I think when you look at his spray charts and you know where he hits the ball, I think at, at home he should he should thrive. And obviously he's a, a great personality, great worker. So uh, we're excited to. I was excited to see him here. We're excited to have him. Hosmer in that same category, though, getting a lot of advance. Yeah, I mean, he's going to play, um, you know, a lot of first base against right-hand pitching. Um, I don't want to see him make out David's lineups, but, um, you know, I, I expect that he'll play a lot of first base against righties, and um, <clears throat> I expect Trey will, you know, will DH a lot against right-hand pitching as well. Just on the personality front, I mean, there's a lot of you guys that have been talking about leadership, personalities, yeah. whatever. Is there anything that stood out about any of those guys coming in and doing something that kind of caught your attention or caught your eye as to – I think Dansby right <clears throat> right away called everyone. I think that was that was fantastic. That you know just making that effort right away as a teammate. But um, I think part of why I was so excited to get here and and, and, and to sort of get going this spring is um, I do love the group of guys we brought in. Um, they've won. Um, they're super hardworking guys. They are very supportive of each other. Um, you know, as cliche as it is, a lot of good teammates. But I think that when you look at the reputation of the guys we brought in. They're all really good teammates. I expect they'll be supportive of each other. I think they'll help the young guys, and um, you know I do think that we have a, a chance to have a really um, a group that really comes together uh, exceptionally well. So I'm excited to, to watch us start that process. Back to say, obviously, what you see with 15 other guys that you represent their respective countries in the tournament. And just when you thought you had a normal installment of spring training, that the international tournament rolls around, how did that change the preparation this year? Yeah, I mean, so he came out a little bit earlier. Um, I think he realizes that he wants to be around, you know, our club and our resources as much as he possibly can, while honoring a commitment to, you know, to his country, which is so special to him. Which, you know, we certainly support. You know, he came in you know, late, later than even everyone else last year, just because of the whole signing process. So, you know, he has not had a ton of time in Mesa, Arizona. So, you know, he's been here early. You know, obviously he had a full off season in Japan as well. But you know we're just excited to, to get him going and have as, as much time as we can and you know, hopefully he has a great tournament and then get back here and get ready for the season. But he's such a, a great worker and great preparer and you know we have zero concerns that he's uh, not going to be ready to hit the ground running. What about the other WBC participants? How, how has their game plan changed this season? Yeah, kind of similar. You know those guys who come out earlier, they know they're going to have to you know be able to compete a little bit earlier than the, the rest of the guys. There's no kind of transitioning into you know major world class games. So. Um, you know, all of those guys have made sure that you know if their pitchers, their bullpen progressions are a little bit, a little bit more advanced, and uh, the guys on offense, you know, are definitely making sure they're getting live at bats as much as they possibly can. And that's the great part about having the resources here out in Arizona. They're able to come and, and get those, you know, under the, the supervision of our guys, and um, we're very thankful for that. It's going to be quite a normal spring, but for David to have this, all these guys and these personalities, why is he the right one to help bring this group together? Yeah, I think he helped bring it together in a lot of ways. I mean, I think when we when we do the recruiting process, it's, it's wonderful to have a guy like David who um, players connect with. They want to be around him, um, you know, time and time again. Like you know, hit the connection that he has with those players is, is a big part of I think why they uh, they want to be here. And um, probably one of the the main themes I would say for us this winter was just um, the extent to which players want to be here. Um, it's not always about the the highest dollar, you know. I felt like you know continually with our with these guys, they were reaching back out to us. I do think we recruit well, but I also think that like Chicago sells itself, Wrigley sells itself, and I do think you know David Ross and the and our coaching staff is really helpful. So um, obviously he's he's the right guy, but also I think he has a he's a big part of you know why a lot of guys wanted to to play here. Don't, we don't know the exact date. You know, obviously he'll be there in time for the first game, but <laughs> don't know the exact date quite yet. So how he prepare for the season? They can, you put him on uh, as much as bat he can. Yeah, so he'll get live at bats. We'll have live VPs. We'll have you know he'll be part of all of our workouts before he heads out. Um, you know, he'll, whatever he needs from us, we're gonna we're gonna provide for him. Are the WBC be valuable for younger players like the Owen Casey's and Matt Mervis's? 
quality of pitching they could see in that tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a guy like Matt has you know, been in, in AAA and, and seen some pretty quality arms, but I think just being able to play on that stage, you know, even you know, playing in the Arizona Fall League for a guy like Matt or, or you know, a guy like Owen, you know, that's not going to match the intensity of a World Baseball Classic, and you know, that's probably as close as you can get to major league intensity without actually being in the major league. So the ability for us to have those guys get those experiences is, is huge. Um, so, you know, we're excited that they're going to be able to do it, excited that they wanted to do it, and, um, you know, really a, a lot of upside for us there. Yeah, when you're talking about your projections, uh, brought up, um, like, honestly, when you look, I mean, offense was kind of the thing you were looking at. You have to, like, round up to, to make, to, to find the numbers you want to get. Is that the area you're still a little bit unsure what, what it's going to look like? Yeah, I mean, I think we have a lot of players that have um, <clears throat> have you know potential to to break out to to you know ex exceed their projections, and I think with with every guy you kind of come in um, to spring, and, and that has to be the goal, right? How do I how do I take it to another level? How do I exceed my projections? And I think you know that's how we sort of get to to where we need to be offensively. Um, you know, have guys that. You know, maybe bounce back from from years that weren't as strong as they had hoped for to you know young guys taking the next step. To you know, we mentioned a guy like Saya, obviously you know, in his second year. So I think we have a lot of guys that that have a chance to take that step, and you know we probably need that to to a certain extent. You did you did sign a closer, but you did sign some middle relievers that came close. Would you like to see someone take that job or spread it out, or, or how do you look at that? Yeah, I, I mean. I think you know ultimately that that'll play out. That'll be Rossi's decision. But um, I think we have a number of guys that are capable of doing it. Um, you know, I, I thought last year, towards the end of the year, I thought he did a fantastic job with the bullpen when you know, we didn't have a, a set closer after we traded Robertson. Um, he mixed and matched really well um, with with different guys based on the game situation. And and, and I think in, in a way, I think that was. Um, Educational for him, instructive for him. Like, hey, I can I can mix and match at the end of the games, and um, he never had that kind of had that um, that option to, to do that. He always had a, a more set closer, so I thought he did a great job with that. I'd expect some of that, but it is always nice to have that um, certainty of role. I think for all the, the pitchers down there having the, the set role, so um, I'm sure that'll be part of his thinking as well. But we'll, we'll see we'll see how that plays out. What are those offensive wild cards, if you will? Is Bellinger, what gives you guys confidence that having him in your infrastructure with your coaches can help with this change of scenery and bounce back to the form he was in 2019? Yeah, so he's got you know some experience with Dustin Kelly and, and Johnny Washington guys on our, our coaching staff. Um, so I think that's definitely provided some comfort for him. He's been here almost every day since he signed. Um, so you know that that part's been. Um, extremely encouraging, just his ability to work in the weight room, his ability to work, you know, with our hitting coaches, his ability just to be around our resources. So, hopefully, that's provided some comfort for him to allow him to be himself. We know that when he can be himself, he's going to be really, really good. Um, so that's our goal is to be able to have that reemerge and you know see how he does out there in center field. We're pretty excited about it. Jed, how great is to see guys buying in? Like Carter just said, Kobe, you've been here almost every step of the way. Justin Steele, he bought an apartment down here. It seems as if the Cubs culture right now is really starting to bloom after 2016. Yeah, no, it's been great. And, and I say this, you know, half joking, it, you know, looking at the, the schedule of what's going on, it feels like that's what's been happening here for the last month already. We just, now it's called spring training. But before, we've had live BPs going on, we've had bullpens, we've had tons of guys here hitting. You know, I've been talking to Dustin Kelly almost every day. For probably the last three or four weeks, like you know, what do you see today? Who is hitting? There's so many guys that have already been here. So, um, when we built the complex, that was the hope. You know, build a really nice complex, a single team complex, and you hope that guys would would gravitate and want to be here. And and it's awesome. And <clears throat> at the same time, we have lots of guys that you know they want to you know live in their hometown and they want they have a, a trainer and they have a, a you know a hitting guy they want to work with, and, and that's great too. You know, we don't. Have, it's not. Certainly not mandatory, but it's awesome that so many guys want to be here. And like I said, it almost feels like a continuation of what's been going on already because so many guys have been here working out and um, so many guys are excited for the season. What, what do you look at when you look at the starting rotation? What stands out to you? What's the strength of the group? Yeah. Well, I think one of the things I mentioned before, I think we have a lot of strike throwers. Um, I, I don't expect um, you know free passes. I, I, I think that we'll. We're going to put the ball. The, the ball is going to be in play. We don't have a lot of guys with you know thirty percent strikeout rates. So I think that, um, but I think the quality of the uh, uh, of the strikes will be really important. And I think hopefully we can uh, avoid hard contact and you know, the balls that are put in play we can convert to outs. Um, 
And I think, you know, listen, I think we have some, some really solid veteran guys um, that um, there's probably some uh, expectation of what, they'll, of what they'll provide, but we also have some young guys that I think have a chance to take a step forward. And, uh, you know, we're expecting big things out of guys like Justin Steele and Wesneski, and, and hopefully they can take us, you know, take that next step and, um, and provide that, you know, that stability, uh, that, um, that, you know, that, that, next, uh, that next level thing that both those guys have. Yeah. Well, certainly, I, I do think our, our game planning infrastructure has been good for a long time, and I think that that's something that's been a that's been a competitive advantage. But you know, ultimately, you know, a, a ball in play has a certain percentage of, of, of being a hit. You know, and so uh, the better our defense is, you know, the the more that will help uh, that process. But you know, certainly, you know, we think we have a lot of really quality pitchers. Um, but you know, we're you know because we're not going to you know. You know, strike out thirty percent of of the of the guys in the rotation. We're going to have to rely on good defense. We're going to have to rely on a pitch mix, and and uh, that's something that our, our our infrastructure is good at. But it's something that's a challenge. How important is it that you're at a point depth-wise where you can kind of absorb the Kyle Hendricks situation, knowing that you have four guys lined up and kind of the length is much better than it would have been a year yeah. or two if that would have happened. Well, we certainly wish we yeah you know, had, had Kyle. You know, I mean, uh, obviously he's. He, He's excellent and has been for a long time. Um, you know, last year it felt like early in the season when we did have injuries, we weren't we weren't ready for it from a farm system standpoint, from a depth standpoint, and, and that's been a, um, a huge emphasis for us. Um, we're going to have injuries. Um, things are going to go wrong. There's, a, that's, there's no question about that. You sort of come into the season, you know, knowing, okay, there's going to be a lot of bumps in the road, a lot of hurdles. How are we going to overcome those? And you know, depth is a big part of that, and I think we, we certainly have much better depth than we did a year ago. Um, my hope and Carter's hope is over the next few years, and, and, and including this year, that we can, um, you know, just continue to, to build the farm system out to have that that depth internally. Um, so you're not relying on external, um, you know, guys when you do have those inevitable bumps in the road. And I think we're we're better equipped for that this year, um, but we're not all the way to where we want to be.